This is the Redmi Note 10 Pro with a 108 megapixel camera. And here's my full review after making it my main phone. If you're new to the channel, I make tech videos of all sorts. And for all the subscribers, welcome back. It's been nearly two months since Xiaomi announced its affordable camera-centric device, and since then, we've seen a few interesting devices such as the Poco X3 Pro, F3, and even the Realme 8 Pro. Though none of the Poco devices that I just mentioned come with a massive camera like this one, the Realme 8 Pro, which recently launched in the Philippines, don't come close to the value offering of the Redmi Note 10 Pro. In case you're wondering, here's the full spec sheet of this phone. You won't be able to see this kind of packages on the market, such as the AMOLED and 120Hz pairing, that massive camera, and a massive battery with fast charging. But what really surprised me when I first held this phone is its design and build. I was expecting this phone to be as thick and heavy as the X3 Pro, given they have similar schematics. But it's actually thinner and lighter, thus making it a bit comfortable to use. It's not as thin as the F3 nor the Mi 11 Lite, but the heftiness is enough to make me use it with a case without worrying about that extra bulk. Both sides are of Gorilla Glass 5, which neither Realme nor Samsung can copy as they are fully switched to all plastic at its price point. But I do have to mention that the frame is still plastic on this phone. It's also glossy and attracts fingerprints, but not as bad as the iPhone 12 Pro models. Serving as the icing on the cake is an official IP53 dozen splash resistance. I have here the Glacier Blue color, which I personally would recommend to anyone looking for a casual looking phone. The finish on the back is frosted and hardly attracts smudges, but you do have to be careful using this phone naked as it can easily slip away from your grasp whether you have dry or sweaty hands. But if you're a case person, you can just forget all about that. And lastly, there's no notification LED indicator, so you just have to make do with the always on display feature. Speaking of the display, this 6.67 inch 120Hz AMOLED is bright, colorful, and impressively comes with wide viewing angles. While it's still not as color accurate nor as bright as my Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the overall quality is close to Poco F3, which I praised in my separate review video. Out of the box, the color scheme is set to auto which basically makes the screen more colorful while maintaining that natural look. However, I find the setting to be too saturated and weird, particularly when viewing photos in this phone. That said, I just chose standard with default white balance to read off the weird inconsistencies. But when it comes to that refresh rate, you do get the benefit of better responsiveness when gaming or scrolling as well as the perceived smoother animation across apps. Well, except when you're on YouTube or Netflix or any video streaming app, because like most high refresh rate phones, it downclocks to 60Hz to save battery. Perhaps the reason why this phone isn't as smooth as the Poco F3 despite sporting the same panel is the chipset. Inside this phone is the Snapdragon 732G from last year. Like other OEMs, Xiaomi had to recycle the chipset either for the reason of lack of supply or to cut the cost to make way for that 108 megapixel camera. To be fair, the chipset isn't bad per se. It certainly gets the job done despite its age, whether you're playing games or applying tons of TikTok filters. But because the processing power is just enough, MIUI can stutter at times. Xiaomi could fix this by making the software more optimized, but as of MIUI 12.0.15, that has yet to happen. In fact, the biggest bug that I've seen so far is the slowness of the UI when playing a YouTube video in picture-in-picture -picture mode. It doesn't only happen to the app itself but the entire system, including other apps and the home screen. However, that's still not enough to make this phone unusable. After turning off battery restrictions for my Messenger app, I finally get my notifs almost always on time. Nova Launcher is still my default choice of launcher despite the lack of support for gestures from MIUI 12. Day-to-day -day operations were almost as fluid as the X3 Pro which has a much powerful chipset. The fingerprint scanner is fast and accurate, but I would suggest turning off the haptic feedback and the setting as it's only as good as the X3 Pro, which by itself means buzzy and loose. The dual speakers are a bit of a mixed bag for me. They are loud and clear but they do sound tinny for a stereo speaker and slight distortions are present on high volume levels. 
But then again, it's definitely better than most single firing speaker phones. You do have an audio jack here, so that's a nice bonus. When it comes to battery, the 5020mAh is enough to last you up to 2 days worth of use. During my 6 month revisit of the X3, I was already blown away by the impressive battery life despite the high refresh rate and IPS LCD. But now that the Redmi Note 10 Pro is using an AMOLED panel, as you may have expected, the battery performance is slightly longer and better. Between 16 hours to 24 hours of use, 4 to 7 hours of those are with my screen turned on. Sometimes I would end the night with 35 to 50% left with medium to light usage. And with a 33 watt charger, getting from 0 to 100% is just as fast on the X3 series, taking just about a little over 16 minutes. This phone has a dual layer graphite cooling system that makes it as good as some gaming phones in dissipating heat. Whatever the case may be, I do think it distributes the heat to the outer shell of the device effectively as the back panel feels warm in light use. Now with heavy use, it does get hot but not an alarming rate nor at a cause of performance. If you're looking to squeeze the performance, the 8GB RAM probably won't give you that FPS boost that you need, unless the games you're playing are very RAM intensive. That said, most users should be fine with 6GB even after a couple of years provided it's still the same apps you're going to use. Now for the biggest selling feature of this phone, the 108 megapixel camera. Four sensors command the back, an 8 megapixel ultrawide, a 5 megapixel macro, and a 2 megapixel depth in addition to the main sensor. The photos you get out of the main sensor are very impressive. Whether or not I'm using 108 megapixel mode, the results are nearly identical. Colors are natural with just the right amount of saturation, although sometimes HDRs goes overboard in processing. The main sensor applies pixel bidding to output 12 megapixel photos. However, I shoot mostly on 108 megapixel mode simply because I can and it makes the photos appear sharper when viewed on a small screen. I can further see the advantages of the large sensor in limited lighting conditions as the noisy and blurry processing is minimized here. But make no mistake, darker parts of the images struggle in preserving sharpness, resulting in smudgy quality not even the hardware can fix. In low light conditions, you can get away with just regular mode thanks to the light absorbing ability of the sensor. Using night mode definitely makes the photos better but it's hard to see the improvements in detail preservation. Overall, I think the 108 megapixel camera takes solid photos in all scenarios. It's already a very good camera. If Xiaomi included OIS in this phone, even by slightly bumping up the price, I think this would take the camera into that greatness category. But when it comes to videos, it's just good enough. The main camera can record up to 4K at 30 frames, but the ultra wide camera can only go up to Full HD at 30 frames. On the flip end, both 4K and Full HD look excellent already, so no problems with that. If there's one thing I wish this phone could have done better, that would be stabilization. At 4K, the electronic image stabilizer could barely keep up with the video recording while walking. But at 1080p, it's significantly smoother. I'm not sure what Xiaomi did here, but the X3 Pro and X3 even have better stabilization than this phone. Switching to the 16 megapixel selfie, at the very least, selfie recordings are stable. You may want to extend the field of view by using a selfie pod though. Photo-wise, I think the overall quality of selfies is good. You just need to watch out for group shots as any subject that's not on focus will appear noisy and smudgy. I really enjoyed my time with the Redmi Note 10 Pro. As the most affordable 108 megapixel phone on the market, it's definitely a device aimed towards those who prioritize camera quality above else. But what's special about this phone is that Xiaomi didn't skimp on other features. You still get a great and fast display, a durable and relatively thin design, and even a two-day battery that charges in an hour. Sure, the chipset is recycled, but in 2021, the chipset isn't really a bad performer unless you play the top-end games out there. With a few more optimizations, especially with the arrival of MIUI 12.5, this phone will only get better. So that's it for my Redmi Note 10 Pro review. The next few minutes will be me showing the gaming experience on this phone, Drop a sub or a like if you feel supporting the channel. And as always, until the next one, stay safe.